Okay, so let's get started with our first solution architecture discussion. And I'm really excited because we're going to see so many different topics all together and we'll really understand how they fit and what are the challenges we have as a solutions architect. So the first website is whatisthetime.com. And whatisthetime.com allows people to know what time it is. I know it sounds stupid, but at least it's so easy that everyone understands it and we'll be able to talk about it at length. So we don't need a database because it's so simple. Each uh, instance, each server knows what time it is and we want to start small, we're willing to accept downtime, but overall, maybe our app will get more and more popular, people really want to know the time around the world, and so we'll need to scale vertically and horizontally, maybe remove downtime, and let's go through the solutions architect journey for this app. You'll see, we'll see a lot of things on how we can proceed. So let's start really simple, okay? Let's start from the very beginning. You're a uh, solutions architect and you say, you know what would be great? you have a T2 micro instance and you have a user and the user says what time it is and say, okay, it's 5.30 p.m. Done, this is my app. So we have a public EC2 instance and because we want to make that EC2 instance have a static IP, uh, just in case something happens and we need to restart it, then I will attach an elastic IP address to it. So this is my first POC. It's working really great. Our users are able to access our application and we're getting great feedback. So now what's happening is that our users are really having a good time using our application. So they said to their friends, hey, you should also use this application. So another friend comes in and says, what time is it? And 7.30 p.m. And another friend comes in, what time is it? 6.30 p.m. And so we realize here that our application is getting more and more traffic and suddenly the T2 micro instance isn't enough. And so as a solution architect, we say, wait a minute, maybe we should replace, replace that T2 micro instance by something a little bit bigger to handle the loan. So that's called vertical scaling. Maybe we'll make it an M5 large type of instance. So what we do is that we stop the instance, we change the instance type, and then we start again the instance. And here we go. This is an M5 type of instance. So what happened here is that it has the same public IP because it has an elastic IP address. So people are still able to access our application, but we have experienced downtime while upgrading to an M5. And so our users were not really happy during that moment, they were not able to access our application. So this works, but this isn't great, right? So next we're going really popular and it's time to scale horizontally. So we get, remember, this application, M5 has one public IP, elastic IP attached to it, and now we're getting tons of users, and so they're all asking what time is it, and so now we want to scale horizontally, so we start adding EC2 instances, they're all M5 large, and they all have an elastic IP attached to it, so now on top of having three EC2 instances, we have three elastic IP, and so our users, they need to be aware of the uh, the exact values of these three elastic IP to talk to our instances. And so that's called horizontal scaling. We're doing not bad, but we see we're starting to reach some limits. Now the users need to be aware of more and more IPs and we have to manage more infrastructure and it's, it's pretty tricky, right? So, okay, let's change the approach. Now we have three EC2 instances M5, and let's remove Elastic IP because it's something that we can't really manage. There's only five Elastic IP per region per account by default, so it's not a lot. And so instead of users, what they're going to do is that they're going to leverage Route 53. So we've set up Route 53, and uh, the website URL is uh, api.whatistime.com. And we've decided it's going to be an A record with a TTL of one hour. An A record means that from a DNS like this, it's going to give me a list of IPs. So remember, Route 53, a record is IP. So great, so the users query uh, Route 53 and then they get the IP addresses of our EC2 instances and they can change over time, it doesn't really matter because Route 53 will get updated, we'll update it uh, and keep it in sync. And so our users are now able to access our EC2 instances and we don't have any elastic IP to manage anymore. So using Route 53, uh, we've, we've done some good improvements. But what happens is that now we want to be able to scale, you know, and be able to add and remove instances on the fly. And so when we do remove an instance, uh, what happens? Well, it seems like these users on the top, they were talking to this M5 large instance, but now it's gone. And it turns out that if they do a Route 53 query, because the TTL was one hour, they're using the same response for one hour. So for one hour, they'll try to connect to the instance and that instance is gone. And so here it's not really great because even though these users 
are having a good time and maybe after one hour these users will be able to connect to these two instances they're not having a good time right now because they think that our application is down and that's really really bad so okay so this is an architecture and we see the limit of it so how can we push this a little bit further so let's talk about adding a load balancer so instead now having we don't have pr uh, public instances anymore we have private ec2 instances and we're going to launch them in the same availability zone because we don't know any better so we've launched them manually we have three m5 large instances and we are following this course and we said okay let's use a load balancer and you know what on top of it it's going to have health checks such as if one instance is down or not working at least we won't send traffic from our users to the instance so okay we're linking the two together so my elb is going to be public facing whereas my private ac2 instances are in the back and so they restrict traffic between these two using maybe a security group rule that we've seen before uh, using security group as a reference okay that's that sounds pretty good so now our users they're going to query for what is the time.com but this time it cannot be a record because a load balancer has its ip changing all the time and so instead, because it's a load balancer, we can use an alias record. And this alias record uh, is perfect because it will point from Route 53 to the ELB and everything will work really great. And so here we change the DNS, but now the users connect to our load balancer and our load balancers redirects us to our EC2 instances and balances the traffic out. And it's really great because now we can add and remove these instances and register them with our load balancer and we won't have any downtime for our users thanks to the health checks feature. So really, really good. But now adding and removing instances manually is pretty, pretty hard to do. So what about we just leverage something we just learned in this class and we'll launch an auto scaling group. So now we have our API on the left hand side, it's the same thing, Route 53, ELB, but on the right hand side now, we're gonna have an avail availability zone and we're going to launch private EC2 instances, but this time they're going to be managed by an auto scaling group. And so this allows our auto scaling group to basically scale on demand. Maybe in the morning, no one wants to know the time, maybe at night when people want to leave work, they want to know the time. So we're able to scale based on the demand, scale in and scale out. And this is really, really great uh, because now we have an application, no downtime, auto scaling, load balanced. Um, it seems like a really stable architecture and it is. But what happens is that uh, there's an earthquake that happens and availability one goes down. So the one goes down and guess what? Our application is entirely down. Our users are not happy. And so Amazon comes to us and says, yes, it's because you haven't implemented a multi-AZ application and we recommend you to implement multi-AZ to be highly available. So, okay, we say, all right, let's, let's change a little bit the things. Now we're gonna have to ELB and on top of having health checks, it's also going to be multi-AZ and it's going to be launched on AZ123. So three AZs for this ELB and our auto scaling group as well is going to spawn across multiple AZ. And this allows us maybe to have two instances in AZ1, two instances in AZ2 and one instance in AZ3. And so the cool thing now is that, oh great, like if AZ1 goes down, well, we'll still have AZ2 and AZ3 to serve our traffic to our users and we've effectively make, made our app multi-AZ and highly available and resilient to failure. Pretty awesome, right? Okay, how far can we go with this? Let's keep on going. So we have two AZ and we know that at least one instance will be running in each AZ. So why don't we reserve capacity? Why don't we start basically diminishing the cost of our application? Because we know that for sure, two instances must be running at all time during the year. And so by reserving instance, maybe for the minimum capacity of our auto scaling group, then we're going to save a lot of cost in the future. Whereas the new instances that get launched, maybe they're gonna be temporary, so on demand is fine. Or if we're a bit crazy, we can even use spot instances for uh, less, less cost, but we might have the instances being terminated. And so it's really interesting, right? Because we've seen an architecture going from a very small application all the way to a you know load balance, auto scaling group, multi AZ, health checks, reserved instances type of application, and so to me that's as a solutions architect your journey. It's up to understand what are the requirements and what should we architect in returns to these requirements. And this is what the exam will test you. Now this is the first architecture discussion. Trust me, there will be many others in the next lecture. But for now, let's just review what we've discussed. 
where we've discussed, for example, what it is to for an institute instance to have a public IP and a private IP. You know, where does it fit in our architecture diagram? We've also seen what is the benefit of having an elastic IP versus using Route 53 versus maybe using a load balancer for our application. We've also seen that thanks uh, because of the Route 53 TTL, we couldn't really use A records. So we had to use a load balancer and alias record. And so that would be able to see how Route 53 can fit in this whole picture. We've seen how to maintain EC2 instances manually. And then we say, well, it's too much maintenance. Let's use auto scaling groups. And you know what? It's actually going to provide us even better costing because it'll just scale on demand and we'll just have the perfect amount of EC2 instances at any time. And then we said, okay, let's go into multi AZ. We can survive disasters this way. And let's enable ELB health checks. So that's only the instances that are correctly responding do get traffic. And we've seen how to set up security group rules so that the EC2 instances would only receive traffic coming from the ELB. And finally, we said, you know what, let's look at capacity, let's do some cost saving. We always know that we want two EC2 instances running at any time. So let's reserve these instances, and they will bring lots of cost savings. And so all this discussion right here, there's a thing called the well architected framework in AWS, and we'll be talking about it um, at length as well in the dedicated section. But there's five pillars to it. And there's cost performance, reliability, security and operational excellence. And so through this discussion, I want to educate you that we have actually seen these five pillars So cost, uh, cost has many different purpose. So maybe we're scaling up our instance vertically, maybe we're using ASG to just have the right amount of instances based on the load. And maybe uh, we want to reserve instances as well to optimize cost. In terms of performance, well, we've seen vertical scaling, we've seen ELBs, we've seen auto scaling groups, basically how we can adapt to performance over time. Reliability, we'll see how Route 53 can be used to basically reliably direct the traffic to the right EC2 instances, and maybe using multi-AZ for the ELB and multi-AZ for the ASG as well. For security, we've seen how we can use security groups to basically link the load balancer to our instances reliably, and operational excellence, how we can evolve from a very clunky manual process all the way to having it fully automated with auto scaling groups, etc, etc. So really awesome. I think this is a good discussion and we'll have many others. But as a solutions architect, start understanding uh, what are the technology we've seen and how they fit together and how they solve problems all together when we're uh, when configured correctly. So that's it. I hope you liked it. And I will see you in the next lecture.